Gum Zambata here once again as we continue picking some of the brightest and bestest brains as far as football is concerned locally and I am now joined by a man who um, is kind of making the north his homestead. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure by now you must have a title deed in that part of the world. Welcome to the, the chat Mr. Dylan Kerr. Thank you so much for your time. No, it's always a pleasure. It's nice to, nice to you know, go out from the norm and, and, and speak to the press rather than uh, type it on WhatsApp or, you know, uh, do it this way. So, no, it's always good. It's always good. Great. Thank you. Um, let's, let's start with, obviously, um, sort of housekeeping as far as um, COVID and how it's um, affected things with you and uh, the team. How have you guys been coping? It's been tough mentally. Tough um, from a social aspect on, on, on what football is all about. It's about the togetherness. It's about players being, you know, interactive with each other, having a laugh on the training field, winding people up, winding me up, you know, having, having fun with each other, being competitive. And uh, we've not been able to do that for, I think it's nearly four months now. So it's been, it's been frustrating for me, but I know it's been frustrating for my players. Because every day when I speak to some of them, actually most of them every day, you know, I tend to like keep it with them. They keep asking me, coach, when are we going to get the ball back? When are we going to get the ball out? And I can understand how frustrating it is for them. Yeah. But I think it's going to be, it's going to be you know, it's going to be a, a big ask when we return on such uh, an enormous amount of time you know, of layoff that we, we have had. And when, when my players come back, I, I do, I do go, and, go around and see them. You know, I'm, I'm a coach that just doesn't contact them by phone. I'm not into this Zoom uh, with fitness training. You know, they, that's my uh, opinion. Uh, I, don't, I don't like it. Um, uh, other clubs do. But, you know, I, I, I do take the time out to go and, and visit my players and make sure that they're... They've, they've not been eating too much, not got alcohol stashed away that, you know, and um, where, where they think I'm, they think I'm stupid and I can find it. Right. Uh, but no, they all, they all look very, very well. Uh, they all look in good spirits. And most of them, most of them, you know, tend to hang out together, you know, in small groups, you know, live together. Yeah, some, some share house. And it's, 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 it's going to be, it's going to be a, it's going to be interesting when we when we resume and if we resume because we still don't know yes we've been given the go ahead but we still don't know and that's the frustrating thing for for me as a football fan uh foremost but also you know for as a football coach okay coach and then in terms of the testing how's that going at baroka um are players being tested are you being tested what's the rollout with that well, we, we we've actually followed the PSL guidelines and the government guidelines. You know, we've we've not we've we, we've not really, you know, I don't I don't I don't think we've we've chased as as much as we want to start training again. Well, we, we've chased this. We've today we we had medicals, so the players had the ECGs, the blood pressure, you know, the blood count for sugar, diabetes, and cholesterol, and tomorrow. We're going to have our COVID tests finally. Finally, um, which, which will which will enable us, with a bit of luck, to have a full squad return to training when the results come through. And uh, you know, credit to the club doctor, the physio, the team manager for you know handling this uh, you know as, as as nicely as we could. Right. You know, without without the the added constraints of not having the materials that, that, that we have that people need for the testing and having players being frustrated and, and asking that question when we're going to start training when we're going when we're coming back so yes yeah, so tomorrow uh, we're all reporting in small groups uh, obviously we, we've got to keep that social distancing and in, and, and limit that contact sure where you know, we, we, we will we, we will get we will get the first round of testing and hopefully, fingers crossed, touch wood. Yes, my players will be my my players will all be um, negative. So, and um, but but we've seen you know when when we've been away so long, we've actually seen you know uh, there's reports that 
uh, some clubs have got it, and other other clubs have, have not got it. But we don't we don't know. But you know, I'm hoping that we we're, we're all going to be clean bill of health. Right. But you know, no one knows. No one knows because it's it's invisible. Nobody knows who's got it. Sure. You know, so sure. we don't know. Okay. Are uh, you also of the professional opinion that you're going to need about a month? to get back to uh, match readiness, match fitness, uh, once training resumes? Longer. Longer. If you think hmm. pre-seasons, you, pre-season you get a four-week, five-week break where you know, they, they, they've got to go home, they've got to relax and recharge the batteries, but also maintain the level of fitness, which, to be fair, in this day and age, players are monitored with GPS, so we keep a track of, of each individual uh, player. Where back in when I played, your six-week holiday was your six-week holiday. You went out and partied and holidayed and did, did everything, but but you knew that you were going to come back on day one for six weeks pre-season. You knew you were going to work hard for another eleven months. Sorry, for another ten months. So it's 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 a tough one because uh, we've we, I've. I've just been hearing stories and rumours of what's been happening and it's been frustrating because everybody's got a story or everybody's got a scenario. Um, we, we, we've, been on, we've, been, we've been working on whispers. Oh, we can start training. We can't start training. You can do small groups. You can't do small groups. You know, the season's going to start. The season's not going to start. FIFA said that the season's got to be completed by X amount of days. Uh, now we can continue. Uh, the COVID virus is, is getting worse in South Africa. Yeah. Uh, and it's, 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 it's not getting any lower. Whoever says that this curse Latin, you know, I think they're not, they're not reading the, the, the slides right because, mm-hmm. you know, every day the cases are going up higher and the deaths are going up higher. So we're, we're in a predicament. And for pre, for, to say we've been off four months and we've actually not kicked a ball, really. We've not kicked a ball as a footballer. Yeah. Yes, keep you up in and doing all your showboating skills. These African players can do that. You know, it's brilliant. It's brilliant to watch. Mm. But you know, you've not kicked a ball for nearly four months. You cannot expect your players to come back in such a short, short space of time. You know, without you know getting properly, you know, reinvented into you know having that football and doing football related uh, training. Mm. And I think I think a month's cutting it. Just a bit too fine, but we know the constraints. We know the PSL want the league finished. We know they want to start the new league as, as soon as we can, hopefully with, with, with supporters. But it's going to be tough because, you know, your, your friendly games are against your ABC, your mm. Motsepi League right. teams, and they're not allowed back. So, you know, your, your, your friendlies are going to have to come from with within, yeah. Uh, but, then, but then, but then that the competitive battle, the the match day um, mentality, you know, it, it's tending not to be there. So we we we, for me, it's got to be it's got to be long because we don't we don't want to risk injuries as well, you know, because it, it's going to be it's going to be a tough month, you know, two games, possibly three games a week for us. Uh, Vicks have got nine games so they've probably got three games a week we don't know what mentality Vicks are going to be in now that they've been sold mm. uh, will the players will the players there's, a, there's lots of ifs buts and maybes and you know there's a, there's, there's, there's a massive, a massive a massive conundrum of what could happen uh, and what is going to happen so uh, but the, 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 the one thing we need to do is keep the players safe keep the players active, healthy and fit and, and, and not risk injury. No, for sure. Whoever has to come up with that plan and execute it has uh, an unenviable task. Let's talk about the timing of the break. You kind of broke a snap of, you know, um, bad results, let's say. You know, you had the cup victory over Black Leopards. Then you had uh, the victory in the league over Black Leopards, breaking a, a, a snap of losses there. In terms of that, you know, what was going right? at that time? What did you think had changed in that time to get those kind of results before the break? The, the player, honestly, the players decided to listen. <laughs> they, they, decided, they decided that they weren't going to play the way that they wanted to play. They're actually going to follow instructions uh, and, and play 
how I wanted them to play. And it, and it's tough. It's tough because you know when you come into it halfway through the season and you're in the bottom of, bottom two of the league. Yeah, it's tough to get mentality of these players switched on to what you want and, and how you want it. Uh, the first five games was impossible for me because I was in the stand. I wasn't on the bench. Mm. You know, and I didn't know the players as such. You're, you're relying on you know what what you know about certain players and, and how certain players play. But then we started to you know have a bit more confidence. The players got a bit more belief. The chairman you know gave them a massive incentive. You know to to finish off the season as well as they could, and basically I've been preaching them enjoy the game but play with the ball. You know and. We 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 committed we've committed suicide in most of our games that we lost because it was our fault. Nobody nobody has scored a good goal against us. It, it's always been a mistake from a Barocca player, whether it's the goalkeeper, whether it's my centre half, my fullbacks, my strikers, my midfielders. We've we've hurt ourselves, and and that's because we kept giving the ball away. Um, we didn't retain the ball as much as as, as I wanted, and, and and especially how we practice. You know, if I could take the model of how we practice into a game, we, we, we would be in the top eight, without a doubt. You know, but, but if you don't do what you practice and, and do it in a game, uh, if you keep giving the ball away, especially to teams like Bates, um, Highlands Park, right. uh, Blue Celtic, and you know, teams that, you know, we, that we should be competing with, if you mm. keep giving them the ball away, they have got so-called better players. Mm. Uh, they're a bit more organised they've got a, a squad that's been together a lot longer than what my squad's been together right. so they, they, they're going to take advantage of that mistake and we've been punished by that but from we went down to Bloemfontein Celtic which was a very very tough place to go to uh, in, their, in, their, in their home ground and we, we, we were unlucky to come away with, with a 2-1 defeat but uh, what I did like was they, they actually you know, bought started to buy in why we have to keep the ball? Because we frustrated Bloom for Tate Celtic. Problem were, we, you know, my, my fullback gave the first goal away. My goalkeeper, you know, made a mistake for the second goal. No, not blaming. You know, I can't point fingers. It, it, it's just it happens in football. Sure. But if we cut the mistakes out, we don't lose games because nobody's nobody's creating, you know, goal scoring, open goal scoring chances against us. Mm. We've conceded through our mistakes and through set pieces. I mean, some people argue that there's no such thing as a home advantage um, uh, in South Africa. But looking at your results, the trend would suggest that when you are the home side, um, you seem to be a better proposition uh, for getting the three points. How does that now, considering the fact that we probably might go into a World Cup style format for the rest of what's left of the league, affect you? And also, as far as your aspirations, you know, you've got the cup on the one hand, you've got survival on the other. How do you approach? or find a balance between retaining your status, but that's still giving your fans and your players something to try and achieve as far as winning some silverware? Well, I've always said, oh, look, I mean, I'm a, I'm a great believer in what you do in life is, 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 is what you get, or is what you're rewarded with. You know, and if you, if, you, if you want something so bad, you'll give everything to go get it. And like I said, we've got ESL survival. That's the first uh, thing we need to do. We've got the Ned Bank Cup, we're in the semi-finals with a home draw, but now it's going to be played at a neutral venue, um, maybe against Bloemfontein Celtic or maybe against TS Sporting. Because we, 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 we again, rumours, stories, whispers, you know, they played a player that was in, ineligible. Um, so, and so we've, got, we've got a chance to get to the final. And I've said to the guys, you know, just, they know, some of them know about playing in the Telcom final. Some of them have never played in a final. And one of the things you'll always be remembered by in history for life is if you win a, if you win, if you win a cup final, you know, you'll forever be in the annuals of, of, of the world uh, long after you've gone. You know, so give your grandkids, give your, give your kids, your grandkids, your great-grandkids something to remember you by when, when, when you're hoping ever watching them, them playing football. But, you know, and then on, on the back of that, we get to the final. And if Mamelodi Sundowns get to the final, I believe that we'll qualify automatically for the Confederations Cup. Um, but, you know, so, so we've got three, three big things to go with. We've got three big cup finals, six in the league, one in the Nedbank Cup, 
uh, and then uh, if, like I said, touch wood, I'm touching my head now, um, we um, we get to the final. You know, it, it's it's a 50-50 thing. Doesn't matter who you play. It's a good final, and whoever whoever wants that medal, whoever wants that trophy, forget the cash. It's not about the money. Right. It's about it's about that medal. It's about that trophy. Uh, for me, it's about tattoos. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the but the play the players know the players know that, and you know one of the one of the one of the good things I have, mm. um, and Kenny Dalglish, Sir Kenny, Sir Kenny mentioned it last night uh, after Liverpool won the championship. He said uh, the only reason that uh, Liverpool won the championship was three things: they had a good dressing room, they had a good coach, and they got a good chairman. And we've got that. We've got that. You know, if, if, you, if you if you look player for player in my dressing room, we're not the best. You know, we've got characters, we've got players that have got ability. Mm. Um, and, and, and I'm going to I'm going to say to the players tomorrow exactly what King Kenny said because it's true. You know, I've got a chairman that's that's building. You know, our own. We call it the village, our own training centre. Um, he's, he's 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 supporting the players as best he can in this COVID situation. You know, he's paying them. Uh, you know, um, his frustration is like mine. He wants to get back playing. He wants the team to uh, to remain in the PSL. Um, whether I'm a good coach, I'm not a good coach. I think I think that's a false one yet because. I've not really done any, anything yet. Um, so I think two out of three we've got. You know, <laughs> a, good coach is, a good coach is when he, he does his job at the end of the season and he looks back and says, yeah, uh, I'm happy with what we've done. Now now we're going to go forward now. Now we're going to take it to the next step. And remember, Jurgen Klopp did in the Premier League for three seasons. For sure. You know, for sure Liverpool haven't won the Premier League for 30 years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? and, uh, and just, uh, and just uh, a little uh, match fact for you. you know, this... Time, this time 30 years ago, when Liverpool last won the uh, English uh, League Division 1 in them days, which is now the Premiership, Leeds United, which I was part of, we won League Division 2, which is now the Championship. Yes. So hopefully there's a little omen there that Leeds United might, <laughs> you know, pull the awesome. suit and win, win promotion back into the Premiership. Well, let's see. I mean, it's an exciting uh, amount of football that we're seeing from Europe. And like you say, it'd be great for us to get back in the mix as well and create our own moments as far as local football. is. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Let me ask you as a football fan, mm-hmm. right? Do you, are you, are you excited? Have you been excited by the, the games in the Bundesliga, if you've seen it in yep. Spain or in, in England? Um, obviously... I think as a football fan, uh, I understand the limitations of the current situation. So I appreciate when I have the crowds in the background, but the, 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 the football itself has been great. You know, players are obviously getting over that hill of like getting the match fitness, that hour mark where everyone seemed to be struggling initially. And now everyone seems to be playing like they were playing. All that's missing is the fans. But, you know, this is what we have. Um, and to be honest, a lot of people watch overseas football having never been to those stadiums. So it's kind of the same for South African. If you're sitting in your lounge watching the game, you know, crowd or no crowd, unless you're in that crowd, it's pretty much the same thing. I'll agree with you, but for me, the competitiveness of that crowd, uh, you, you see what we're hearing in, what we're hearing on the TV, they don't hear that in the ground. Yes. They're, they're just playing in the stadium. So, right. you know, you, the, the, the good thing is you don't hear the swearing, you don't hear the cursing, <laughs> you don't hear the, the shouting. No one can throw a players. coin at you. Exactly. And, you know, for me, a lot of games that I've watched have been like friendly games. They've not had that. I mean, Sheffield, I'm, 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 I'm a big Man United fan. I'm a big Leeds United fan. I'm a big football fan. Right. Uh, but I know Chris Wilder at Sheffield United and I've watched his last two games. Um, and that's not the Sheffield United that I know. And Leeds United, Leeds United who played Cardiff for the weekend, they miss that support because Leeds United fans, that support gives them the edge over anybody in, this, in, in, in UK football because the Leeds United fans are absolutely diehards. And... It does, an, it does have an effect on you. And yes, we've got supporters at Barocca, uh, but if you look at the likes of Chiefs, Pirates, Sundowns, uh, Bloemfontein, Celtic, who have got the, the big followings, yeah. um, you know, how, how are they going to, to react to that? And, you know, I, I, watch, I watch football with a fine you know, toothpick to, to yeah. pick out little things that are going to help me. Right. And 
you know, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that I love my football, you know, and, you know, sometimes my friend has said to me, look, why don't you come around and we'll, we'll, we'll have a chat and everything. No, 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 sorry, football's on. <laughs> I've got to go. Yeah, no, for so, sure. So you're a student of the game, a student of the game who first arrived on the continent around 2015 um, when, you know, you then went on to go win, you know, the league um, um, with Gorma here. In terms of your own footballing philosophy, how did you have to tweak it once you arrived on the continent? Or did you have to? Maybe you didn't have to. Um, Maybe you didn't you didn't have to adapt much from where you were before you arrived here. But did you was there any kind of fine tuning of your method once you interacted with African players? No, yeah, look, I mean, look, I was lucky. I played here in eighty six to eighty nine, so I, I knew African football. I knew what mentality uh, of of African players. I came back in two thousand and nine, um, and it 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 went as well as as it could for me being an assistant to Sammy Troughton. Uh, again, um, okay, I went to Tanzania in 2015, I went to Kenya 2017, um, and, and I, just, I just bring my philosophy of enjoying the game and, 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 and believing in what you know, the, the players can do, but with a, with a bit of direction and a bit, bit, bit of organisation, you know, how things you know, can happen. And, and the only problem you, you have to do as a, as a foreign coach is get the trust and get the players to believe in what you want to do. And like I said, it took a while for my players to do, but when they did it, they, you know, they, they, the, 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 the different style of play has, has shown and both on and off the field. You know, they come to training with a smile more because we're playing well. Even if we didn't get the result, if we play well, they come to training with a smile. But the thing is, they leave training with a smile. Uh, and that's what you've got to do with uh, African players because you, if, you, if you, excuse the word, if you piss a player off, if, you get, if a player gets angry with you, um, it not only upsets one player, it spreads like cancer because he's got his own little friends, his own little sure, group. Sure. And, and that one player turns to two, turns to mm. four, turns to mm. eight, turns to 12, mm. turns to a squad then because then you're a marked man. And as soon as you've lost the players like that, you, you lose one player, it, it, you, you end up losing within a few days the rest of them, and, and they'll do the best <laughs> to get rid of you. They'll do the best to get you out. All right. You know, my time, in, my time when, I, when I came back in 2009, I worked with Sammy Fumalanga Brackaces with the Morphus. That was a, the, we, we, had a, we had a great agenda. We had a great way of believing in what the players could do, but we had, we had, a, we had a guy that was a CEO or whatever he was that was undermining because he wanted the job. So, he, you know, he was the one that was causing the problems. And we left. We left. We went to Tanda Royal Zulu. You know, and again, you know, the interference from, from inside was a problem. And Sammy left. Um, I went to Tanzania at Simba, one of the biggest clubs in East Africa. And I had interference from the whole board who wanted to basically be me. They wanted me to be the coach. They wanted to be the coach. Hmm. You know, by telling me who to pick, and I, and I had a, I had to put a thick skin on and say no. Um, and in the end, you know, they, they they didn't like it, so we agreed to 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 move on. Um, and then I went to Kenya. My chairman at Kenya was absolutely fantastic. Didn't do anything. Didn't say anything. Just let me do my job. And we won back-to-back -back titles. Qualified for CAF twice. Should have beaten Esperance, who, who later on, who went on to win it that year. Should have beaten Esperance. Uh, we got we got beat one nil away from home, and we should have beat them both home and away. Uh, and then, obviously, my time at Black Leopards was fantastic, but my mum was very very ill, so you know I had to for once I had to choose my family over football. And then I got the opportunity to come back to Polokwane, as you say, back up north, back to Limpopo province. And I, um, I came to Barocca and my chairman has got massive, massive ambitions. Uh, he's got a vision, which, you know, a lot of teams, chairmen don't have vision, you know, where, you know, they, they, it's a lot of them are very, you know, narrow. They just want to go down this path where my chairman's got, you know, he, he's open to, you know, doing things and, and suggestions. Don't get me wrong, he's tough. No, he's... 
he, he knows what he wants and you know we, we have discussions and we, we talk about things and so you have you know, a personal relationship actually we have a professional relationship okay you know we i know when to laugh and joke with him mm -hmm. and i know when to stay away from him right and i know when he's angry right i know when he's angry but but that but but that's that's the thing yeah. Listen, if this goes off, because I've got 5% battery, so it might go off in a minute. Okay, don't worry. I hope, I hope um, it... Yeah, no. Um, yeah, but um, no, I, I just give my players freedom to play, but play it the way I want them to play, because it's worked. It's worked for, for me as a professional player. It's worked for me as a professional coach. So um, without getting my CV out and, and showing them my tattoos every day, we used to see anyway. You know, they, they, they know that I win things and uh, I win things because I do things right. I do things proper as a professional. And, and that's why I try to, to educate all players, not just my team, but players that I go watch. When, I, when, I, when the football season was on here and I didn't have a game, I, I drive to Pretoria. I drive to Joburg. You know, I go and watch games. I go watch MDC games. You know, um, and there's nothing better than a footballer, a young footballer, uh, knowing that there's a, there's a, there's a premier PSL coach in the stand because it gives them a bit of incentive, it gives them a bit of motivation because you never know who's watching. You know, so you know, just getting my place to smile and enjoy it. That's good. I mean, that's a good philosophy. It's a good way to look at it at, at the beautiful game, so to speak. Uh, let's talk about the hallmarks between you know East African football and South African football. Um, you know, South African football has the money. We've got the resources. Um, but I'm guessing you in your career will be able to see the differences between the two. What would you say are the biggest differences between what's happening in East African football and local football? The money, the money that the PSL generate and the PSL have got. Um, from the sponsorship and the TV um, coverage that they have, you know, is, is, is different class. You know, they've got the stadia, obviously, on the back of the World Cup. The, the, they've got the fan base, which, to be fair, you know, I keep, I keep reminding the players because on the Saturday and Sunday on, on SABC1, there's retro football where it shows lots of games from the 80s and 90s, you know, where the stadium act. You know, the fans used to come and watch football you know, but we didn't have for, we didn't have TV like sure. we did. So they had to, yeah. So they had to come, and you know, it, it, it's something that the PSL have got to look at. You know, marketing these football games and getting people, especially young kids, in at the games. You know, and um, I, I do know, you know, it's a big ask for a lot of countries, but they know they should now be starting giving free entry to under. Mm. Under under sixteens mm. to to games to get to get them hooked sure. because if you look if you look at the fan base there's a lot of older people uh, both in, in Europe all over the world fan, football fans are you know my age going upwards uh, you know the, they're the diehards you know and, and youngsters now have got iPads they've got different ways of entertainment they've got Instagram they've got social media so we need to start getting the next generation uh, and one of the things that you know South Africa has is got they've got a good strong soccer base um, where in other countries like Kenya, Tanzania, apart from Yanga, Simba and possibly Azam because they're heavily financed by, you know, Azam TV. Mm -hmm. uh, in, you know, there's not, very, there's not very many countries in Africa. Um, maybe North Africa have got, you know, Tunisia, Morocco, Algiers and uh, Egypt. But South Africa's got probably one of the biggest, uh, in, not just in Africa, but in the world. You know, and uh, why South Africa, why Bafana, Bafana are not reaching all the, all the stages of the World Cups and, and African nations are doing better. Again, you know, they've got a new coach. I'm very supportive of him. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a very nice gentleman. I just, hope he, you know, I just hope he has that same belief you know, that, 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 that should transpire back down to the players. That, hey guys, come on, you know, we're South Africa. We should be challenging for major trophies because you've got the, you've got the potential, you've got the players, but you've also got the politics. You know, and I've said to the coach, pick your own players, pick your own players. Don't listen, don't listen to me. I tell you, he came to watch, he came to watch our game against Black Leopards in the, in the, in the, in the first, in the league game. Okay. And we had, we had evidence uh, a, a, a young player play striker and he scored two goals right right he, he came uh, and he said and, and after the game he said coach why didn't you tell me about that striker 
And I said, that one of the reasons I didn't, I want you to make your own opinion. Yeah, I know what he can do. I know what he's like. I could tell him all about my players, but he has to sit there and he has to judge for himself because it's his opinion that counts, you know, when he, when he selects a team. You know, it's not mine. It's not Pitzos. It's not Gavin Holmes. Yes, talk about players, but you make that initial judgment. You call yeah. the players that are going to win you a game. For sure. You know, exactly. because then, then if it doesn't happen, then you, you've only got yourself to blame. If you're picking players through other mediums or other... Mm. Uh, influence, you know, other influences for your decision, yeah. Then, then you've, you've got no comeback. You've got no comeback because you, you, you've agreed to it. You know, and, you know, the, 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 the African Cup of Nations was a disappointment for South Africa. Um, and it's... Lessons to be learned. Learn from the lessons. Sure. Learn from your mistakes. Don't unbundle you know, and start again, mistakes. which is what happens in yeah. the past. Yeah. Yeah. I hear yeah, you. I mean, Qatar 2022 is the, is, is the be all and end all. Yeah. For me, it's going to be the best World Cup ever. Because the Qatar people, the Middle East people, have got the money, they've got the stadium, they've got everything uh, to, to put on, you know, one hell of a show. Like, like South Africa did when it became the first African country to host the World Cup. What an honour, what a prestige to, to be that forever, for life. You're the first country in Africa to, to host the World Cup and did so well, did so well in, 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 in the infrastructure, in, in, in bringing people together. You know, and 10 years later, have we, have, we, have, we, have we grown? Have we grown as a country? You know, both on and off the field. You know, it, you know it's, there's, there's, there's lots of things, you know. Give me okay. one hour, Mr. Mr. Ramaphosa. I'll, I'll put him in. I'll put him in. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll set it up. Let's, let's talk about, um, just you know, very quickly before I let you go, I just want to find out in terms of your thoughts on the, you're about to have new neighbours next season um, in TTM, uh, touch wood, because you're going to be in the PSL still. Um, what's your take on the, you know, buying and selling of statuses? I mean, it's a tricky one. Um, because I, I understand both sides. The business side is, of course, you want to have owners that are able to sustain a club. Um, but at the same time, you feel for fans who have had an emotional investment in that club and now it, it doesn't exist anymore. Where do you sit on the issue? Well, I mean, look, like I said, in 86 to 89, um, you know, my first, game, my, my first BP top eight final when I first arrived to South Africa was against Vince and we, we beat them 2-0. We beat them 2 0 in uh, Durban and we, we drew 0 0 at Ellis Park. We won, we, I won my first trophy. I'd only been in the country a month. And um, every time we played at Mill Park, Mill Park was always special, always had an amazing field. It has a fantastic clubhouse. Um, I mean, there's some stories I can tell you. What, well, no, I can't tell you. You know, with, you know that we, whenever, we got, whenever we didn't have a game, we used to go to Vitz to watch their games because we'd end up in the bar. And, and, and to be fair, sometimes it'd be five, six o'clock in the morning hmm. when we'd actually get out and, and, and actually go home. Right. Um, and, and, and 99 years, you know, one year before their 100th anniversary, it's gone. It's gone. And, you know, the, a lot of teams don't like coming to Limpopo uh, to play games. And, and now they've got another, uh, another team to come, another trip for them to come. Sure. Uh, back up to Toyando. They don't like going to Toyando because of the Leopards fans. Yes. Uh, so now they're going to have to go up to Toyando for the TTM fans. So right. it's, it's, it's a shame that bits of, you know, of, 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 are going to be no more from a professional status. Hopefully, bits will still continue. Hopefully, the university will come up with a plan and a structure and bid vest from the money that they've, that they've got from the sale of the club should invest in something because they've got the facilities. You know, um, again, on the back of the World Cup, the, the, they, they, they got some fantastic training facilities. Um, and, it, and it's sad, but I remember my old team, Arcadia, they, they, they went through the same process. They sold to Dynamos, and within a year, Dynamos went bust. Um, I think somebody bought, when I was at Black Le no, when I was at um, Tanda Royal Zulu. Yep. Uh, no, sorry, I was at Nighty Lions. Nighty Lions. Some, some guy in, in, in Joburg bought Nighty Lions yeah. for, for some stupid amount of money. And then a year later, they got relegated to the ABC Montsepi League. 
you know, so it, 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 it's a gamble. It's a gamble because of, you know, the Premier League's not easy. The, whoever, whoever's, whoever's in charge has got to, got to do his right recruitment. The coach has got to know African football. Mm-hmm. You know, the coach has got to be a coach that wants to come for the, for the job, not for yeah. the money. Yeah. For the job. Yeah. You know, it doesn't come in for the money, you know, and, and, and if they get that right, then, you know, the first year, they've just got to stay in the PSL. Um, but that's what, you know, I've said to my chairman, you know, I'll, I'll first and foremost, stay in the PSL, then let's go forward for next year and, and try and try and win the PSL. Hmm. You know? Oh. Okay. Nobody can tell me that, no, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter how much money you've got and what best players you, you can buy. Um, you can only play 11 v 11. Hmm. And if that 11 v 11, if your team wants it more than the opposition, sure. you'll win the game. Sure. You know, so it's, it's, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be, like I said, we don't know if we're going to come back. We've still got to be given a, a date. Yeah. Uh, but at least, at least clubs are getting, getting tested now. You know, again, rumours, whispers that other teams have been training. You know, it's, you know, uh, it's nothing to do with me. Yeah, it's exactly. Like they can do that. So we, we, we just, we just, I just, I just want my players to, to understand one thing. It's your life. It's your career. Do you want to, do you want to screw it up? Then, you know, that, that, that's up to you. Right. You know, I, I can I, I can walk away knowing that I've done my best and I'm doing my best every day, along with the chairman, along with the staff, along with the, 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 the people in the office. We're doing our work, you know, but at the end of the day, once you cross that white line, are you doing your job and are you doing it to the best of your ability? And then if you do it, then you can go home, look in the mirror, uh, and say, yes, I've, I've, I've done myself good today. So, Coach, um, I mean, there's been plenty of ideas as to how to resolve um, the league season. Everyone obviously wants to play to finish and, 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 and wrap up their, their 30 games for the campaign. How do you see it? I mean, you know, we've heard about World Cup-style format, being somewhere where everyone's isolated, but outside of a hotspot, which is, you know, difficult because the hotspots are where the resources and infrastructure are especially because in the last two rounds, people need to kick off all at the same time. Like I said, when we started speaking, whoever has to come up with this, I don't envy their task. But how in your mind do you see it playing out? What do you think would be the most sensible way to wrap up the season? Um, as a football fan, yeah, we all want the season to start uh, and, and, and finish. Mm. Um, without the fans, it's going to be tough um, because without the fans, football is not football. And as a before earlier, football in, in, in the UK and uh, Spain, Italy and Germany, it's not the same. You know, the, the, the teams are not playing with the same spirit, they're not playing with the same competitiveness, especially the teams mid-table, you know, you, you know, who are safe from relegation and not going to qualify for Europe. Um, you know, but the first, first and foremost is that, you know, we, we don't spread or we don't give us any chance of getting this virus, you know. Me, it's gone on too long. I mean, it's, it's to, to, to be four months, now five months, um, without a game, without a competitive game. And then, I mean, to finish the season, and we've got to finish the season very, very well. We've got, we've got, we've got probably the toughest running than, than, than anybody. Um, and, you know, it's going to be very, very tough. But, you know, the government, the government have got to, you know, they've got to understand, and I, and, I, and I was listening to the SAFA doctor yesterday, that we have to start at level one. So if we start at level one, level two is going to come into play at the end of this month. Level one will come into play at the end of August. You know, and, and you know, it's the, 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 the big thing is to, 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 to stop this virus. You know, we, we, we've got to come up with a plan. And like you say, the last two games we're going to play, everybody's got to play at the stadium. Can we play in Rustenburg? I don't know. I've never been. Um, I don't know what facilities they've got. Can we play in Joburg? Yes, because all the stadia, the, the, we've got more stadia there, but it's a hot spot. In Popo, we've got two pitches, three pitches if you consider Toyando. Uh, but then you've got, you know, you've got you know, teams coming from, and there's 32 teams, remember? Yep. Not just the PSL. For sure. There's the Glad Africa. For sure. You know, so uh, it. it it's, it's, it's a tough one. It really is a tough one. It is. You know, who's 
Sundowns have shattered, you know, last year. I would have rather played Sundowns before the break because the players were on the, you know, dead on the legs. Right. The pitch had, had, a, had an horrendous fixture uh, list. Yeah. Same as Gavin. Yeah. It's been horrendous for him and uh, Pizzo. But they're, they're the ones that needed the rest. Right. They've had the rest. They're going to come back rejuvenated. Um, and they've, they've got the experience. They've got the so-called better players. Mm. Um, Ernst wants to win uh, Chiefs their first title in a long time. Pirates want to still challenge. Vitz, we don't know what, what, what we're going to get from Vitz. Motivation is going to be, yeah. Um, I've, got, I've got utmost respect for every football coach that's going through this um, in, in the PSL and in the Glad Africa uh, because it's not been easy. But the government and, and the PSL and Dr. Irving Koza and, and his, and his uh, uh, executive committee, they've got to get this right. They've got to get this right. And it's, it's for the good of football. It's for the integrity of football. But also, you've got to look at the players' health, the players' you know, mentality of, of, of this. Uh, and, and we know that the, uh, come the end of the season, whatever happens to, to any football team, it's only a couple of weeks before the season restarts. You know, and again, football fans, they're going to be watching the PSL games on TV. And a lot of, a lot of supporters, a lot of Chiefs and Pirate fans haven't got that luxury of DSTV. So they'll be going to people's houses. They'll be joining, you know, groups. They'll be watching it, you know, in, you know, there'll be, there'll be very little social distancing. We've got, we've got to get it right. Not just, not just the government, the PSL, but also each football club has got to get it right. And it's, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. But you know, it's, it's kind of worked in the UK. It's kind of worked in Germany. A lot of injuries have been. We've seen a lot of injuries from players. You know, if you haven't got a squad like Pizzo, mm. you've got, uh, you know, a lot of players, right. a lot of good players yeah. that can come in. Um, you know, again, that's going to that's going to be disadvantage to, 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 to certain clubs. Yeah. You know, that's not going to work against them because, you know, you're in a tough environment to come back after so long. Mm. Because road running, Zoom fitness, <laughs> aerobics... Doing weights, Doesn't doing compare, yeah. you know stuff with a with a bouncy ball. Yeah. That's not football. Right. Football's all five meters, ten meters, fifty meter sprints, mm. challenges, mm. twists, turns. You know, and 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 it, it, it does affect players. You know, muscles. And I say, you know, I've got to trust my players that they've done everything to the best that they can. Yeah. Both, uh, but. Well, physically, but more, more so mentally. Yeah. You know, and because uh, basically you've had nothing to do, nothing to do, mm. but watch repeats. Which, to be fair, SuperSport have done really, really well <laughs> with, with a lot of football. Right. You know, I would, I would hate to be a cricketer. <laughs> I would hate to be a cricketer because you don't watch much cricket on SuperSport. No, no, you know, no. So it's a flash with football. Yes, you're right. You're right. Well, I, I flip between the football and WWE. You know, so. <laughs> okay. No, I, I do I'm know if, on if any of my players. If any of any of my players piss me off, they'll be getting body slam. Uh, you know, I, I do know my I do know my clothesline now and we're, we're from the WWE. Too much WWE, it seems like. <laughs> Coach, let me ask you about that consideration now that you know, in, in essence, COVID is is another form of injury now because what happens when a player tests positive? I mean, you you essentially run the risk of also losing personnel for up to two weeks if they quarantine. But that must be a, another ball ache as far as a consideration to make again again it's it you know are we putting players are we putting players and, and staff at risk just to finish a football season you know that, that's the, that's the big question you know yes we all want to come back yes we all want to finish the football season some clubs of belgium and france they've they they and, and holland they shut the season down mm. you know they haven't got the financial backing that the english premier league have sure. got well, and, that's one, and, one of the Spanish things people are playing. saying is that, like, because we're such a money league, the e economics suggests that we have to see it through because, you know, the other leagues who kind of shut up shop can't afford to because no one's really paying much attention to them, um, in inverted commas. But, yeah, the money leagues like the Bundesliga, like Serie A, like La Liga, the EPL and the PSL are, are, are looking to see it through. Yeah, but luckily, I don't think any football club has, has had a coronavirus death. You know, and, and and you've got to think right. You know, do you want do you want to be a country that has that first uh, coronavirus coronavirus fatality? Yes, 
in sportsmen and in young fit athletes, it doesn't affect everybody as much as it does the elderly right. and people who've got in concerns or respiratory uh, problems. Yeah. It doesn't affect it doesn't affect athletes, which is a good thing. Mm. But you know, there's the, 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 there's going to be one case that we just we just don't need it to happen. It's 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 something that you know we, 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 nobody's got an answer for. Nobody's got a vaccine. Nobody's got a cure. Um, everybody, um, I, I do, I do sometimes forget more than anybody to wear my face mask. You know, it's just habit. You know, I, I, I do still. If I'm running, I'd still spit. It's a habit that I can't get out of. I try and not spit. You know, I'm consciously thinking that. You know, I'm not going to spit. I'm not going to spit. I'm not going to spit. But then sometimes I have to spit. <laughs> It's, it, it, it's, it's what you do in football. Right. You know, I've not seen I've not seen a player being booked for spitting yet. Mm. You know, but it um, might just be. You're right. It's, it's a new this, world. Yeah. This five sub rule. This five sub rule again. Yeah. Is it going to be advantageous to Barocca Football Club, or is it going to be more advantageous to the top three? Mm. You know, we, we've got to weigh that up. Mm. You know that they get two extra good players on. Sure. You know, but the the, the big thing the big thing is that we've got to do this right. Because of because of the PSL, because of excuse me, Super Sport, because of the the high profile of, of South African football, we have to do this right. The government has to do it right first and foremost. The PSL uh, and the executive committee have got to do it right, and they've got to support whatever the decision is um, to resume, when to resume, how we're going to do it. Is everybody going to be happy with 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 you know what's going to be decided? Yeah. You know, and then and then we've got to say, yeah, right. We're going to go. We've we've all got to agree, because at the end of the, at the end of it, and I'll give you one prime example. You look at Hearts in Scotland. Yeah, they their season finished in the Premier League. They've been relegated. Hearts have been relegated. They're going to court next Thursday because they don't think it's fair because they weren't given the opportunity with nine games to play, which is a lot of points. You know, they, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, so you know, we the, the, there could be a lot of permutations and that as well, because you know, the excuse, oh well, we didn't want to do this, or we didn't want to, we didn't agree to do this. You know, once everybody's got to come under an agreement, the, pre, the our chairman, my chairman, and and every other chairman have got to agree with the PSL that this is the best way forward for the better. Or South African football because it's it's once and hopefully the last time this pandemic or a pandemic like this will ever get out because the world has come to a big stop. A lot of people have suffered. A lot of people have lost loved ones. A lot of people have not been able to see people that they you know mums, dads, even 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 grandmas, granddads. They haven't been able to see them because they've got to stay away all over the world. Um, luckily, luckily we've not had that. A crazy amount of deaths that Britain have had, that America have had, that Brazil are now getting. We haven't, but it, it's, it, it is increasing. It is in the Western province. It's now coming back to Gauteng. Um, touch wood, I'm in Limpopo. We've not got that many cases, and I hope it stays that, that way. Uh, I said to the chairman the other day, you know, no, no team likes to come into Limpopo. So, what chance has COVID nineteen got? <laughs> Limpopo? No, we're not going there. <laughs> it's too far. That's too far. Too far. <laughs> Coach, my final question. I'll let you go and enjoy your evening. Six finals for you, um, as far as the league is concerned. And like you said, you have an unenviable run-in as far as some of the teams that you have to face still. Um, six times three means there's eighteen points on offer. How many of those do you think you're going to need uh, to survive? I know ideally you'd like all of them, but what's your, or, 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 or do you stay away from that mathematical approach to, to your matches? I'm, 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 I'm always a believer in you play game by game. Mm. You know, you, you, you get a point. If you get a point, you know, especially, well, they're all going to be from away from home now. If you get a point, that, 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 that'll be great. Um, but you, you, you have to, you have to look at going to Super Sport and getting three points. You have to look at playing against Chiefs, Pirates, and Sundowns. Uh, even though it's tough, uh, it, 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 it is, it's, it's, it's there for you. you know? yeah. Is that um, one of those situations where you know the players will just be naturally motivated? So you actually, it, it does make your job easier in, a, in an instance like that. But that, that, that again, that's, what, that's another thing about that African mentality. Why they motivated to play against the big three 
you know, if you're motivated every game that you play, you're in the top of the league and you get more coverage, you get more idol, idolism from, uh, from supporters, from the press. You're never out of the papers if you're in the top three. For sure, but you coach, know, so I mean, consistency what, 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 is one of the biggest things. Why yeah. should you be motivated? But yeah, why should you be motivated just to play against them? Who are you, who are you trying to impress? Right, them. You know, you, you them. don't impress anybody. <laughs> to impress. Yeah, but why? You, 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 that, again, it's a mentality. Yeah. You, you know, yeah, you. If, you're good enough, if you're good enough to be um, Paul Aquani, you should be, uh, and no disrespect to Paul Aquani, mm-hmm. you should be good enough to be Kaiser Chiefs. Wow. Uh, okay. And and that's that, 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 that's the only way you win things. That's what Liverpool are a prime example. Mm. You know, the players that they've signed, the, the, they've come to the club and they've gelled with the management, with the, with the chairman, and they've done the job. They've waited 30 years to win that league. The Rocker have never even been close to winning the league. Let's change that mentality. And, and I always remember Granny, who, God bless her, um, she's back in the office after losing a, a, a child recently. Uh, and it's great to have her back because she's got an infectious smile. She once said to me, and I'm going to have this written on my grave, on my stone. Um, she once said to me, um, what's wrong, coach? She looks sad. Mm. I said, I hate losing. I don't, like, I don't like losing. And she said to me, oh, coach, you know, we're used to it. Don't worry about it. And, 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 I, and, I, and, I, and I remind her of that every single day. <laughs> You know, change that mentality. Yeah, I don't want yeah, that mentality. For sure. Uh, don't ever say that again. Mm. You know, and, and, and she's not saying it to be nasty. Of course not. Of course If you're used to driving, if you're used to driving a Volkswagen Golf City, yeah. you know, and you've got no ambition to drive, drive a Volkswagen Golf GTI, right. then you'll, you'll, never, you'll, never, you'll never get that yeah. if, you've got, if you don't want it. For sure. You know, if you're just happy to go along with the same as, same old. Yes, the, the Golf City is a nice car, mm. but a GTI is yeah. a lot nicer. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can pull a lot. More, they can pull a lot more chicks in the Golf GTI <laughs> than the Golf City. That is true. That is true. And on that note, sir, thank you so much for your time. I really enjoyed speaking to you. Um, it's a Friday evening. You're having your non-alcoholic beer. Go get a real one now. Your, your work is done for the day. Thank you so much, Dylan Kerr. I really appreciate you speaking. No, it's, it's right a right pleasure now. to speak to you. I hope I haven't gone on too long. And, oh, you uh, keep well. Look after please. yourself. I hope to see you um, at the matches when everything goes back to normal. Um, obviously, for this last run-in. Yeah, get those points. And keep your status. Thanks, Brilliant. Keep Take well. care, buddy.